In my everlasting quest to install USB-C in all the things, uh, do a DS Lite, yeah? So, I got this pretty snazzy little kit sent to me by a uh, top bloke on the Game Boy Discord uh, handle Roarsaurus. I'll go ahead and throw a link to his GitHub and his Tindy. I don't know if he sells these yet, but he's probably going to sell these pre-assembled. Um, but he went ahead and sent one my way to go ahead and check out. Um, he actually sent one my way quite a while ago to check out, and unfortunately, because of who I am as a person, I um, obviously didn't do that. I'm, I'm sorry, bud. I meant to. I swear. I just... stuff comes up. <laughs> uh, anyway, I got this today. And, uh, man of my word, if nothing else, so let's go ahead and get this installed. Uh, I'm going to start with this DS Lite. I would like to do my, uh, my daily driver DS Lite, this one. Um, I use air quotes because I haven't actually used a DS Lite in a very long time. Most of my actual DS games are done on a 3DS, but, you know, just throwing that out there. Of all my DS Lite consoles, this is the one I use the most, but I'm also going to, since I have to take this thing n mostly apart to get this installed properly, I'm going to reshell it at the same time, and I don't really want to reshell this, so, you know, two birds, one stone. Um, but this is my, my cool DS Lite with the buttons. Anyway, that's besides the point. This is not what it may appear to be. This is a... DS Lite, yes, but it is not original. This is an aftermarket shell, but the console itself should be fully functional. So we're going to start off and, oh, I picked a good donor because that port has seen better days. I'm sure it still works fine. Let's try it out, actually. Let's just double check. Not that it really makes that big of a difference, but, you know, maybe you have, yeah, works just fine. Maybe you have a console that doesn't work just fine. And the issue is the port. This could be a good way to fix that. All right, battery cover comes off. The screw on the battery cover is a J00. It is a JIS screw, not Phillips. Um, there is a difference, despite the fact that they look very similar. You can use a Phillips screwdriver in a JIS screw and vice versa, as long as you have the right size. If you do not have the right size, it will strip out practically instantly and you're going to have a bad time. The other screws, I believe, are a J0 and yeah. This does use Y screw. Uh, it's been so long, man. I believe it's a Y double zero if you're using an iFixit kit. Yeah, it feels right. Oopsie doodle. Gotta crank out a bunch of videos tonight because I gotta start running some battery tests. If your DS Lite still has those rubber things, they're pretty easy to remove, even easier to lose. I don't know where that other one just went. I'm sure I'll find it stuck to something. All right. Remember to set that aside later. That one too. Nice. I think on a stock DS Lite, that's also a Y bit, a Y screw, tri point, whatever. On mine, it is not, because like I said, it is reshelled. With 
two exceptions, all of these screws should be the same length. The screw in the cart slot is by far the shortest. And then the, this top screw in the battery cover is also short, but it's supposed to be shorter. And then the rest of these should be the same length. You do not need to remove this screw until you get the rear cover off. Oh my god. I'm not having a good time. I just lost two screws. One screw. I think that's all that needs to come out. By the way, if you have a DS light in, in, in bits, notice the familiarity of this piece. I don't know what purpose it serves other than filling in the mold, but it goes right there. I suppose the stylus did not have to be removed. The power slider and the volume shouldn't go anywhere, but cognizant of those. Alright, and now we need to... That looks like it is a through-hole part, so we need to remove the motherboard. There's no uh, trying to work around that. It's not as easy as a Game Boy, but it is still pretty easy. We've got two short screws. Notice they're the same length as the other one I took out of the battery compartment. And then, this whole module comes off if you want to remove it. Though, on mine, there is some adhesive that was pretty well stuck down. You need to remove the cable, you do not need to remove the module. Your DS Lite will not boot without this. If you put your DS Lite back together and you're just getting black screens, it's because this is either not installed at all or it's not fully seated. I'm going to remove it just because it's easy enough. And then we need to disconnect the black cable, which is the Wi-Fi cable, and the white cable, which is the antenna. And slide this thing out from underneath the cart slot. If only it went back together so easily. All right. First ribbon cable right here. I believe that is the touch digi digitizer. And then I'm going to push up on the screen to flip this thing out. Just trying to get the membranes handled. Okay. And we flip this thing out. And we will remove the ribbon cable for the top screen. Slide that out. And there we go. This is all we need for making a Game Boy macro. No, I'm kidding. Well, I mean, I guess it is, but we're not making a macro today. And that comes out just like that. All right. So... I don't know the easy way to remove this. Actually, yes I do. This port has seen better days, so I'm not going to worry about trying to salvage it. But I'm thinking if you were trying to salvage it, a little bit of a uh, little bit of capped on tape to pr to protect these two components and then just hit it with hot air and flux and should drop out. Uh, but otherwise an easier way to get this out would be to take some flush cutters and literally just cut the legs. Can I get in? I can't really get in on the other side. I didn't really consider the fact that the cart slot's going to be in the way, so instead of that, instead of risking it, I'm just going to try hot air. Fuck it. We're actually, you know, before I resort to hot air, I'm just going to crank the heat up on my iron and uh, drag a big old solder ball across these. That might work.
these are very thick traces going to a very big part so it's gonna take a while and as I say that it drops right out that was quite a bit easier than I expected and there's a huge solder ball on that so if you were trying to salvage that um, be careful you don't do that I guess but easy enough okay that went so much smoother than I had expected there's of course still a ton of solder we need to remove but we'll get there we'll get there can of course use a um, solder braid but I'm going to use one of my new favorite tools here my new solder sucker This thing works so insanely well compared to these cheap garbage ones that you can get for a couple bucks. I think these things go from like 25 to 30 bucks depending on where you buy it. US of course. Um, highly recommended. Engineer SSO2 solder sucker. That is if you course find yourself often sucking solder out of holes if that's not your forte then you know obviously save the money and don't get one at all but check out that suckage I suppose I could have used this to remove this in the first place but it's for shits and giggles. Well, the uh, recoil kicked it away, but it's still got most of the solder, I think. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Anyway, enough tomfoolery. Set the heat back down, and that's not the mod. The mod's up here. Okay. You ooh almost lost these resistors. Move that that way. There we go. If you check out my Game Boy Advance USB-C mod, um, that particular mod is from a user by the name of Blind Eye. However, if you notice in the comments, there is a pinned comment uh, that links to Rorosaurus's re-implementation of that. Um, Blind Eyes mod was great, but it didn't support USB-C host capabilities, whereas this one should, because it has those two pads down there, you notice, for the resistor. So I'm feeling kind of dumb right now, but I got, I, I got to double check. These resistors are small enough that I can go either way. I'm pretty sure this is one resistor, and then that is another resistor. And the fact that those two pads have continuity proves that. I also don't know if it's easier to do the resistors or the port first.
I suppose I would know that if I uh, did the first version you sent me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, bud. I was going through some shit. I think we should be good. Just gonna add a little bit of flux. We're gonna solder the core first. make this so much easier. I had some helping hands. That way I can also angle it up and y'all can see better. I hope. At what cost though? At what this tip is actually a little on the big side, but I think we're good. I also accidentally got some solder in those holes, but fuck it. It'll be fine. Me showcasing terrible methods of soldering. Sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. There we go. These holes are actually kind of difficult to get soldered, at least with this tip. Maybe that's a sign I'm doing things wrong. Usually is. Alright. So for this next step, the resistors are 100% optional, but if you do not solder in the resistors, then USB-C host mode will not work. What that means is you will have to use a USB-A to USB-C cable for charging. So, I somehow don't have one handy. How the hell does that work? Oh, there it is. So yeah, without those resistors, you'll have to use a cable that looks like this. Otherwise, it won't work at all. But we're going to do the resistors. Because that's, like, half the point of this mod. 
Um, I need tweezers. No idea what size these are, but they're uh, not very big. I ought to just dump them all out. My method here is going to be to tin one pad. Grab the resistor and try zooming in. So I got this top pad tinned. And grab the resistor. And slide it in. Boom. There's one side done. Flip it over. Do the other side like normal. And then, just for good measure, go back to the first side, redo the solder joint. Boom! There's one side done. Now, let's tin this other one. Get another resistor. Maybe. There we go. Boom. Okay, easy peasy. Clean off the pork because somehow I got flux all over it. Oh, because it was in my uh, helping hands. And now. Trying to get an idea for the uh, placement. I'm thinking it actually works better if you uh, if you cut this off and then leave those pins in the holes. That way you get just a little bit of reinforcement. So what I'm going to do instead, I'm going to take. Need a surface mount. No, not a surface mount. Through hole. Resistor. Oh fuck, I think these are way too big. Yeah. Not even close. I'm going to take a 47k through hole resistor for no other reason than I have a shitload of them. And I don't even need the whole freaking thing. I'm just going to cut off the leg. One of the legs. Fill that hole back up with solder.
jam that thing on home. Cut it down a sizable amount. Let's put some more solder on the next hole. Boom. It's a little long, but we can fix that later. Now we can take this and solder that on, just like that. And we have at least a little bit of mechanical uh, thing holding it on. Uh, of course it came right out. At least I can straighten it out. Come on. There we go. All right, now it's important that these stupid things be trimmed flush on both sides. And that you actually get shit like this out of there. or else you end up with the best kind of problem, an intermittent one. Nice. Now we can flip it back over and I believe these line up enough that you're supposed to solder these uh, these pads that I went through all the effort of sucking the solder out of. Ooh, that's hot. Don't do that. Don't, don't, definitely don't do that. So it looks like it grabbed on the right side, but not the left side. Now it grabbed. Nice.
cool. We should be all done. That was relatively painless. Except for that burn on my finger. That hurt a lot. I suppose I can clean up all this flux though. Somehow I ended up literally burning the board. So that's cool. Try not to do that. That black spot in the middle. I and mean, I don't think it's going to affect anything, but it certainly doesn't look good. Alright, if I wanted to do any other mods, now would be the time. Like, hmm, perhaps a... LED mod. Fuck it, we're already here. That appears to be the green one, that's the red one. So this top one on the... since I have it upside down, I guess all the way on the outside corner is the power LED. One right under that is the charge LED, and then the one right next to that, oh, I'm sorry, this one's the charge LED. This is the low power LED. Big difference. So we're gonna replace the green one, because I can. A blue one because we're in here and it's open and because I can't leave well enough alone I don't know where that just went. Oh well. So these are marked on here. There's a direction indicator right there. Um, it doesn't matter because I always forget what the hell that means. There's also a direction indicator on the LED itself. If that will focus, you can see that little T-shaped thing. It should be, if I recall correctly, pointing towards the ground, so... What the fuck happened to it? <laughs> okay! I've managed to lose two LEDs in about a minute. Nice. There we go. Let's try that again.
right, and if all went well, I didn't melt it, and we should have a blue LED. I may or may not have melted it. I believe I melted it. Is that not a ground? That should be a ground. Yeah, I think I melted it. Third tries to charm. That or I had it totally fucking backwards. I should have checked that. Oops. Seriously? Oh, there it is. Nope, I didn't have it backwards. This will be a nice simple mod, it'll only take a minute. doing it worked before I soldered it on let me just sanity check with the battery here oh there it goes so it worked I just I don't know what the fuck I'm doing right 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 like I said I'm gonna reshell this thing I'm just going to pause for a moment and clean up all this solder. Alright, here we go. So I need to finish stripping this thing down for parts. I should have put my LEDs away while I was at it, but... Too bad. There. Alright. So this is super easy, especially, com well, at least it's super easy compared to 3DS or DSi. Some super long fucking screws on the left here. And then this whole hinge portion comes out. And you can slide off the shell, but be careful because the ribbon cable has to slide through this this thing right here. Break that, you're in for a bad time. Alright. 
Now this part's kind of a pain in the ass on uh, OEM consoles, but a little bit less so on aftermarket ones because these pads tend to come out easier. There we go. Don't always, but tend to. Mostly because the tolerances suck. There's gaps. And for the record, yes, you can absolutely do this with a metal tool. You never should if you ever want to salvage any of this, though. You will gouge up the shell or the pad or both. And it's going to look like shit. If you know what you're doing, and I'm not saying I do, you can use a razor blade. trick is you have to wedge it, oh that one, that, that one was cheating. You have to wedge it between the shell and the rubber and then angle up on the rubber to get it up. You can't angle on the shell, you have to angle up on the rubber. Four short GIS screws and we're in the home stretch. off there and before I even take this out I'm just gonna start getting the, the new shell ready so here's what I'm reshelling to because I don't know I think it's kind of neat I don't have any of these um, and I've never even seen one before like I didn't even know this was a thing so fuck it yeah let's do it I just want to get this ready to put this in what I should do is go pull one of my white OEM shells out of uh, out of my storage, and then use the entirety of the OEM shell except for the top cover. But I don't think I have any clean white OEM shells, so nope. Right, I'm just gonna pull the microphone out, or not because it's not coming. We'll pull the cable through at least. Pull the Wi-Fi antenna cable through as well. And then wrap this up inside of itself. And that should be it. Now all this, including the hinge and that metal ring, which I still need to transfer over, goes over here. But first, I think we want to pull this lens off. So I think that'll make life so much easier if we do it first. This is, of course, OEM. I should have started with a white console but here we are Hold that in there. Stick down. Oh, this one doesn't have any sticky stuff. <sighs> oh, that is so frustrating. Well, all right, fine. Oh, that is not what I wanted to spend my time doing right now.
I swear these things usually come with the good stuff already pre-applied. Ideally, I should remove all the old stuff, but that's just asking entirely too much of me right now. Just to double check. Yeah, okay. And of course, that's not long enough. Uh, is that one long enough? Eh. Might have to make it work. No, I don't. Just use this. That's long enough. Is that too thin? No, that's fine. bit on the thin side, but I think it'll work. Now, ideally, you want 100% coverage so that it seals against dust. In practice, that doesn't always happen, so do the best with what you got. That's too thick. It's a good thing you don't see this when everything's actually installed because that was not a straight line. I also barely even touched it. I mean, I still touched it way more than uh, I wish I did, but barely. I'm doing this first and not last because the adhesive also holds down the lens and it's just, it, or the screen into the console. And it's just so much easier to get at it 
when it's out of the console. Oh, come on. There we go. Get in there. Come in. For the record, there is probably a better way to do this. Maybe we just skip the reshelling portion because it sucks. Oh, I had it and then I pulled it out. Oh, son of a bitch. This usually goes much smoother too, but because I'm filming, of course. Okay, there. It's partially through. It's not coming out, come on. Come on. There we go. There. Screen's in. I only touched it like three times. I got my screws absolutely everywhere. Before I carry on, actually, I thought I touched it, but I don't see any fingerprints. Stick 
this down. This is printed on one side. Usually you want the printed side down. Otherwise it can scratch off. Alternatively, if you put the printed side up, you won't see these weird marks that are created from the uneven adhesive. Where I didn't clean up the old adhesive and should have. That's a shame. I'll have to fix that at some point. Probably won't, but I should. Oh, nice. I guess I can't reuse that shell. Should be smooth sailing from here on out though. It should be. The rest of this is comparatively easy, but advice, here's a here's a free tech tip for you. When uh, reassembling the top shell, make sure you put all the parts in before putting the uh, cover on. Like Mm, I don't know, the Wi-Fi antenna. Which you can get under there. After the fact, it's just more difficult. Not that it makes a huge difference. I mean, who actually connects their DS to Wi-Fi these days? Yeah, yeah, I know. Local multiplayer, but don't act like you have friends to play with. And the microphone. If you're of the paranoid type, I suppose you could just omit this, but you know, it's really not that big of a deal. If you're that paranoid, you probably shouldn't be on YouTube or, you know, have a smartphone. Just, just saying. Or a computer. How, however the hell you're watching this video.
good God. Oh, that's unfortunate. It doesn't quite fit nicely. I hate doing this, but I'm going to put the screws in. I like to leave the screws out because it's the rule, you know? Like if you're building a PC, you never put the side panel on until you're sure it boots. One of those superstition things. But I'm not putting the rubber covers on until I'm sure. I'll save that at least. For those who just watched this video for the USB-C mod, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm sorry. This is taking way longer than I expected. I mean, you also did see the length of the video when you clicked on it, so I don't feel that bad. Still stuck to the plastic. I was like, what the hell happened to the buttons? We need the hinge. And these extra long screws. It is very tight. Hopefully it'll break in. Probably not, but hopefully. We need... I should definitely go grab white buttons, though. Those I know I have. No, I don't even have to get up. I know exactly where they are. Because I took them out of another console. start and select, of course not. Okay, well screw it. Yes. Hi. You being noisy?
Eh, maybe I'll cut the video. Just upload two different versions. I think that's all we need. Right, so the black one gets routed kind of like this, I think, and the white one, shoot, do I have that backwards? I think I have that backwards. Based on the markings on the cable. Pretty sure I had that backwards. Okay. Oh, now we need to prep the lower screen. Bez oh, fucking A. It did have adhesive. Grumble, grumble, grumble. This is much easier. Kinda. Sometimes it doesn't exactly come off without completely destroying your screen. So that's, that's cool. See, like that, that's not supposed to come off. Luckily, the digitizers are dirt cheap. But I have a ton of them, so it's probably fine. Oh, I suppose I could just continue and then put the bezel on when I know it works. It's probably for the best. Seriously? There were two. Alright, I think this is it. Maybe, maybe not. That was it. Oh! Forgot something. This didn't get too much further. Oh. 
Got something else over here too. Okay. Feed this back through the cart slot. It's never easy. just like that. Up. Interestingly, this one doesn't have that piece. I still really don't think it does anything, but it'll only take me a few seconds to swap over, so I'm going to. It's just a spacer for something. It is now installed. Alright, now we need to install the power switch slider. Volume switch slider. And the shoulder button. use the hardware it comes with or just use the original hardware because fuck it, it comes with the original hardware. These get installed on this side. Unlike the SP, I don't believe these are directional. It is certainly easier if you have towards the inside the lower part, but 
it'll fit both ways. Yeah, so this is the same one. Ugh, it fell apart. All right, and here goes nothing. Got a screw. I also completely forgot that uh, there's a USB C port in there. So I flipped it over just now. that one stripped because why wouldn't it be yeah this shell does not feel great um, it also doesn't quite fit flush I don't think that's because of the mod I'll have to double check with the maker on this um, I'll update it I'll throw an update in the description, but let's try it out. The, uh, does that have a game in it? Nope. Hang on. Don't worry. I have a game. It's one of these indie titles from a company you probably haven't heard of. Oof, yes. So far everything works. That is super exciting. I'll fix this later. I'm, chances are very good I'm taking the battery out again. I wish I had just set it to auto before doing something with it. Hey, recognize my game. Well, I think we've proven that it works. Let's try. that won't work that's the wrong plug so here is a USB-C cable 
that is plugged into a USB-C host charger. And, oh, of course, hang on. I'll be right back. I'm gonna turn this off. Okay, well, I can't find it. It's plugged into something, but I was looking for my USB-C power meter, but I'll just demonstrate that this is plugged into a USB-C host by the fact that it powers my 12 volt TS100 here. You can see 19 volts on that. Plug that, plug it into the DS, and look at that we have charging in both directions. And of course it'll work on a regular USB-C, USB-A cable, but I just don't have an extension here. Oh yes I do, JK. Ta-da, and that charges too. So there you go. So yeah, you monsters. I'll throw links in the description. Um, I really I really think the case is just warped because it's not touching the USB-C port. It's just sticking out. Um, but yeah, I'll throw links in the description to this case, which I don't recommend, but it's still pretty cool, so I don't know. Looks good on a shelf, I guess. And I'll throw links to Roarsaurus's GitHub and his Tindy where he sells, not sure if these mods, but at least some mods pre-assembled. Uh, I know he sells the Game Boy Advance versions pre-assembled. Uh, or you can just check out his GitHub and get the PCB files and make them yourself like I just did. Um, I do want to thank him for actually sending me those, those uh, some PCBs to check out though, that was super cool. Um, and otherwise, yeah. Sorry for the super long hour and a half video on something that really didn't take me an hour and a half, but here we are. Um, at this point I'm just going to finish finishing touches on. Oh, oh, okay. I couldn't see the cuts. I thought they didn't, they gave me the pads and they didn't even bother cutting them out. You know what? They didn't. There's only cuts on the... <sighs> okay, so I guess this thing doesn't get pads because there's no way in hell I can make that work. Oh sure, this one's good enough that it cuts off all the adhesive. I could use the black pads. I'm not really sure I want to do that though. There it is. Alright, well, I'll figure something out for these pads. Oh, this piece of shit doesn't even fit. God damn, I went through all of that. And it doesn't even... F mm. Thanks, China. Thanks, AliExpress. Love it. Love it, love it, absolutely love it. All right, well, good enough, I guess. It's supposed to sit flush, but I have to tuck it under just a little bit. Oh, wait, I didn't want that. Oh well. Alright, yeah, it's still working. Alright, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Cool. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a fantastic night. I set up a bed for him. Right there. 
nice comfy bed. But no, my pants are more comfy. It doesn't even fit on the bag. What's going on, man? Yeah, I'm talking about you. Fucking weirdo. Oh, what? Now you're getting all self conscious? Nope. You know there's a bed right there that you actually fit on. You look comfy. Enjoy your weird nap. <laughs>